Hello you fellow musicians and gamers out there, this is Clannic Gamer here and I'm back with part 2 of my Let's Play of Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy. So without further ado, I am going to start off in Rolling Stones, but I think on this occasion I am going to show off Coco here in Rolling Stones instead of Crash. So Crash can step aside for the moment and let his sister take the spotlight. I think that is really amazing how they ha you have Coco being played uh, in the first game and the second game as well uh, for that matter. And Aku Aku seems to agree with his uh, eyebrow there. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, of course I do agree, Aku. I mean, of course Coco is really good. Um, okay, right, here we go. All right, so Coco, again, she has the same attacks as Crash. Nothing special, no new fancy moves or anything. <clears throat> and at some point as well, I think I might show off the idol animation for Coco as well, because I believe she takes a selfie as far as I understand. And in, in this, like, because I remember seeing that. Alright, now I've got the first Brio bonus token. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very, very careful with how I... Right, I missed it. I purposely did that so I can miss out some invincibility here because the Brio uh, bonus token is here somewhere. But I need to be careful with my jumps here just to make sure. I want to show off the Brio bonus round in this part as well, even though I'm not able to get the box gem. Oh good, I got a life there. Very right, good. Right, good. Right, I got all those boxes. I just want to make sure, uh, because I want to keep checking my inventory every time. Even though I'm not able to get the clear gem yet, because I need the blue gem from elsewhere, which I know where that elsewhere is, it's toxic waste. So I'm going to show off both bonus rounds in this one. Not only the Tona one, but also the Brio bonus uh, round as well. Of course, I'll be definitely looking forward to the Cortex bonus rounds. Not really. <laughs> we'll see how those go, but I'm pretty sure I'll, be, I'll do fine in the Cortex bonus rounds. Because they're the ones that I've got to go to them anyway to get 100%. Right, so it's time for Tona's bonus round. And Coco will obviously have no part in rescuing Tona because, I mean, that would be really weird. Ma imagine that, like, Coco saving Tona and Tona's like, huh, who are you? I was expecting Crash. I was like, well, I'm a sister, Coco. I find that kind of weird how they left the life hanging there and one of the bits of one perfume. Maybe that was something they forgot to implement in there. Because I, I would have thought I would have got that automatically. Oh, hey, get back here, Cortex. Honestly, every time he sneaks up like that. I think that's going to be the animation for every time you complete Tona's uh, bonus uh, bonus round. Because I've seen that multiple times now in the Tona bonus rounds. I doubt there's going to be anything new now. Right, so now it's time for Brio's bonus round. Let's see how I do in this one. I'm pretty sure I'll be fine. Because I I, I'm, I remember completing this this bonus round a lot of times in the past, so I'm pretty confident that I'll do well in this one. Okay, there we go. And honestly, see the detail they put in this bonus round? Oh my god, I am so impressed. The beta looked really good before, but the final one, the final version here, is so impressive. Even Brio is exploding in triumph as he agrees to my comments there. <laughs> And you get, the best thing about the Brio bonus round is you get a lot of lives for that one. Rather than one per three, which is amazing. Okay, so. Get the rest of the boxes here. And we've missed six boxes, but that's totally okay because we need to get the blue gem for that. And now we'll see Coco's animation when she misses some boxes. Oh, it's okay, Coco, don't worry. There's no more boxes coming. You're fine. <laughs> Oh, I find that I find that kind of a uh, um, well, not not worrying, but I find that kind of cute that the Coco does that kind of worrying voice there. He's like, "Oh no, is there any more boxes arriving?" And I like how she she uses the laptop for protection as well. That's pretty clever. Honestly, if I care versions, I salute you for this so far. I really do. Right now, I need to swap to Crash obviously because I need to play as him in Hogwild. Now. I will admit, guys, I did have a bit of trouble in this level in my first attempt when I recorded this because for some reason, when I use the directional pad on this, I have a really hard time in this level. I have no idea why, but I just do. For some reason, I end up having a really hard time on it. But hopefully this time, when I use uh, the analog sticks, I should be okay. Because apparently you can control the hog a lot better when you do use the directional buttons. It's a lot more smoother control the, the hog. 
It's hogtastic. Even the hog looks hogtastic in this. Nah, I'm just joking. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I, of course I'm, I'm joking, but not joking at the same time. Right. Get out of the box and... Oh, just barely missed that trisman there. You see, when I used the directional pad there to get that box and get past the trisman, it was impossible for me to do that. Ah, okay, I'm going to have to die there because I missed the ball. Oh, okay, good. It launched me into... Well, not good that it launched me into the hole, but still, though, uh, I'm impressed with that detail right there. Right. Okay, you see, I barely miss that tridesman there when I do that. You see, that's... Right, let's see. Can I hopefully now get that box? Ah, no! Maybe it was that box. Perhaps maybe it was that box that, that caused me to fail that point. Oh, damn it! Okay. Right, now I'm failing to every tridesman here. I think these try uh, either I'm sucking so much with the analog controls here, which is def which is probably the case. I think I need to really go with the boxes that are right at the boxes at a precise angle here. So can I do that right here? Oh yes, just barely made that one. Yeah, you see the angles are so precise. It's just something that you need to get used to here. I and mean, that's that's what it is. It's not the fact that this is bad, it's just that something that they they've uh, changed here. It's just something you need to get used to, especially this bit as well, and jumping over these uh, hogs on a on the wheel here. Right, can I do this this time? No! Yeah, that last hog has always given me trouble, for some reason. I have no idea why. I've always ended up having trouble trying to get the jump over that last hog. I have no idea why. I think I need to get right up close to it and jump over it. So I'm going to have to really time that one. And I can't do it too early, obviously, so I need to really get my timing right for this. So, can I do it this time? No. Clearly, that was way too late. I think of what... I think I'll need to try and retime the jump again. In the, in the meantime, though, they've, I might as well comment on the music as I'm hearing it right now. They've really given that Western feel to this. I can definitely tell from, like, the... The first instrument there, the harmonica, has definitely captured that Western feeling of, of this level. Right. Let's try and jump again. Apparently not. <laughs> Weird. I do not know how I can't get over that honk without dying. That's really bizarre. That really is. Okay, don't use the directional pad this time. Just keep using the analog. The analog has brought me good luck in this level, and I'm pretty sure it's going to bring me a hell of a lot of good luck in the whole hog as well when I get to that one. I can't even imagine how that one's going to go. Oh my god! Ugh. I think I might be... No, no, I was about to say, I might go wild of rage soon if I don't get past this. But no, I'm... I won't, I won't do that. I'll still endure my patience, I'm not going to get angry at any point, unless if there's something major happens that causes me to die, then, then perhaps I might get a little bit ticked off. But not that much. Oh my god, what... What is wrong with me? Why can I not get past that hog? Like, that hog on a wheel. Like, why? Why is it that one that always causes me to die? Oh, this might be a little bit of a fail montage coming your way, guys, for Hongwild. I'm already at 8 minutes. Oh god, that's not good. If I spend the whole part on this, that is going to be pretty bad. <laughs> right, please. Oh my god, seriously, I'm... I really am starting to get annoyed at this now. I'm getting annoyed at myself because I don't know how on earth I cannot get past that hog, I swear. I'm doing it at every different angle. I go past it at one time in my, one of my recordings, but for some reason I can't get past it in this one. It is starting to annoy me, this. Oh my word, what the hell. Uh, right. Yep, a little bit of honk while starting to brew with me at the moment. Nah. <laughs> I'm sorry guys for sucking so much of this. I promise you I will get past that last hog. Don't you worry. I will get past it. Now obviously I can't run right into it. So yeah, I'll need to definitely jump over that. But I need to wait at the very, very, very last moment to jump over that. I don't ever remember that happening in the original. Honestly, I never remember that happening in the original. That's really weird. I hope we don't end up... I mean, I've got plenty of lives to spare, don't get me wrong, but if I get a game over on this... Oh my god. Yeah. I'm... 
speechless right now. Alright, enough talking, let's just concentrate. Let's see, come on, come on, come on, come on, can I get past the guy? Yes, okay, there we go, okay, right, I had to jump on the fire, right. God, I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. Died so many times on that hog. You know, I might as well keep it in anyway. Oh my god, Audacity, oh, stop lagging. Thank you. Ah, oh, right. Seriously, I'm just... Ah. Oh. I'm really disappointed in myself, guys. I do apologise for that. But now, here's the point where I have never seen up to this game before. So I have not played Native Fortress yet. So, now I heard a lot of people had a lot of trouble in this. Apparently, Native Fortress gave people a game over. For some reason, that I thought to myself, Really? How can the Fortress give you a game over? That seems kind of... Oh, wait a minute. Want old school controls? Try the directional buttons. Yeah. Well, thank you, Aku, for... Or thank you, game, for saying that, but I've been using the directional buttons quite a lot. Especially in the platforming levels, not the, the Hogwild levels. But we'll see how I get on to this. If I actually end up uh, doing this on my first go, of course, without, you know... Of course, with... Uh, without getting the box gym, then I'll be pretty impressed. But apparently a lot of people had some trouble with this level. We'll see how I get on with this. If I manage to get this on my first try, I think, uh, I just think some people need some more practice. I mean, don't give up hope if you are struggling at this. Just keep on playing and just uh, keep practicing. That's all I can say if you're struggling in the Fortress, for those who are struggling at it, for those who are newcomers, anyway. Okay, right, and there we go. Ah, okay, right, for some reason I didn't end up bouncing onto that second one. Okay, right, there we go. Just didn't get enough height. That's probably what it was. Right, there we go. Spin these tortoises away and jump on that. Seriously, plants, why are you not trying to eat me? Seriously. Are these plants trying to make my life a bit easier? I think they are, honestly. Well, that being said, now, probably the next one I come across now. Uh oh. Oh, that was weird. For some reason I ended up jumping on the tribesman, but he didn't immediately put a shield up. That's pretty weird. Oh, damn it. Okay, missed time that jump. Oh, damn it. That was right before a checkpoint. Okay, first death on the fortress. Oh, no. Oh, okay, I was about to go the wrong way there for a second. I was like, wait, where am I? Of course, I know where I am. I've played Crash 1. I should know these things by now. Hmm. That's also an interesting thing. Oh, okay, now you're trying to eat me. Now you're trying to make, give me a bit more of a challenge plan, so I appreciate that. I was looking for the challenge plants. What is wrong with me? Why can I may not make jumps? Why can I not jump over hogs? Why can't I jump onto plants? Okay, now the plant's feeling sorry for me. It's like, oh, you're dying so many times in Hogwild, and you're dying so many times here. You know, I might as well just, you know, not eat you and spare your life. That really is we really awkward on how you jump on the tribesmen there. Really, honestly, that, that that's that's really bizarre. Right, wait for that. Okay, good. Right, made it to a checkpoint. The next checkpoint, anyway. Alright. Right, when is that going down there? Right. Okay, and go. Oh, yes, there we are. Oh, okay, right. See, honestly, getting the timing for getting rid of those tribesmen is pretty difficult sometimes. Okay, right, for some reason that. Okay, I'll wait for that TNTX explode. Okay, and I destroyed both boxes there. That's uh, okay. The explosion radius is obviously bigger in the remaster than it is in the Ancient Trilogy, right? Okay. Oh, wait, no. What am I saying? Uh, it's it's a lot. Explosion radius is a lot bigger in the remaster than it is in the original. So that's probably why I destroyed both boxes. Right. Let's go to the Tornado Bonus Rent. and let's see if I can get the five. Oh no! They've actually changed the background here of the stage. Because I'm at the end of the first island, you can now clearly see two islands in the background. Pretty clever detail from like Air's Visions once again. Alright, and that was not very really a lot from the bonus round, but it was only five boxes, so it was a pretty easy bonus round if you ask me. Oh no, I'm still able to do that trick. Oh wait, I jinxed that, didn't I? I'm still able to do that jump spin trick. Yeah, there we go. Still handy for speedruns. So if I'm ever doing a speedrun in the future, I'll still be able to use that trick. Alright, now there should be an Aku up here. Get that one. 
There we go. Oh, just barely made that steel crate. Oh, oh okay, I thought it was going to fall all the way down to the bottom there. Thank God I didn't. Right. Right, stay and success. We're at the top. We're at the top of the fortress now. All I want to do is jump on you. Right, get rid of you. Because I know there's no boxes behind here, so I'm just going to go behind here. And I like how the plant's like, oh, he's behind there. I'm not going to go back there then. Okay, right, and then jump out that way. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay, right, I can't glitch that way out. Okay, that's interesting. I always remember in, like, the original crash, you could, uh... Oh, okay, right. Oh, there's clouds right above there. The cl oh, oh, well, luckily I got a checkpoint. Luckily I got a checkpoint. But that was a bit uh, stupid of me to not make that full jump. All right, let's go. And... Oh... Ooh, okay, just made that one. Okay, I've died a f Okay, I will admit I did die a few times in Native Fortress, but not that many times. So, I mean, Native Fortress isn't too bad. I mean, it's just the controls just need to get a bit of getting used to. Plus, I've still got 34 lives, so I'm doing pretty well so far in terms of lives. So I need to get the red gem for uh, the Native Fortress. I need to come back to this level. Okay, there we go. Jump across these... Ah, damn it. Didn't quite make it. And I'm all the way back here. That's great. Okay. Obviously, I need to be, be a bit more faster on those fire pedestals. Well, not pedestals, but the... You know what I mean. Like, uh, I thought they were fire pedestals. I always thought they were, but clearly they're not. So I got the name wrong. Probably. Or just bouncy fire platforms. Just call them that. Okay, and go. Ah, damn it. Yeah, I, I need to stop uh, taking a long time on bouncing those fire platforms. That's clearly what I'm doing wrong here. I should do short jumps instead of long jumps. I always remember in the original you did long jumps and uh, that was never a problem. So I guess uh, it gets more of a challenge. So I'm okay with that. Alright, there we go. Oh no, ah! Feed me! Oh, okay, I got a trophy for that, apparently. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, plants, this time you got me. But I'm kind of glad I got a trophy for that, actually. So you plan on getting... <gasps> crashing and burning here, guys. Literally. <laughs> I'm literally crashing and burning here. Oh, God. Right, enough of the puns already, right? Alright. This might be a little bit of a fail montage coming up here, uh, if I'm not careful. Oh, God, right. Alright. Okay, good. This time you do not eat me. You're not getting fed this time, plant. Right, get that one through. Wait for that, and go. There we are. There we are. Right, wait for that. Wait, 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 wait. And go. Now this time do short jumps instead of long jumps. Why? Why can't I not make it across there? Seriously. Oh, well, thank God I've gone Aku Aku then. Seriously, I'm doing short jumps, and yeah, every time with that, it... Wait. Right. At least I've gone Aku Aku, that's all I can say. I can't believe that I'm dying that many times on the fortress. Right. I hope I do not lose the Aku Aku at any point before this. Right. Okay, there we go. That's the one for fruit collected there, and... Go. Go you. Right. If I lose an Akuraku, so be it. Right. And go. Right. Fine. Fine. Fair enough. I'll take the damage. Made it to the end at least. I don't know why. Like, honestly. Every time I've managed to get across those flawlessly, but see for some reason in this, I cannot get that across false across that flawlessly. I have no idea why. I'm wondering if it's just me that's had that trouble. I'm wondering. I'd be interested to know if other people had this trouble as well when they played Native Fortress. And goddamn, okay, I fell right to the bottom. All right, at least I don't die though. That's the only thing. I mean, I only died if I stupidly walk off the edge of the platform. But who would be willing to do that? I don't think I'd be willing to do that, would I? No. 
Okay, right, let's get up to there. Oh, just barely made that one. Right, and 11 boxes are missing. Obviously, that's from the Red Gem path up there. So, that's Native Fortress done. Okay, finally. I lost a fair good lives on that one. Didn't expect that to happen. Alright, let's carry on, shall we? I think what I'll do, guys, actually, I think what I'll do is... Shall I end off here? Or should I carry on? I think, you know what, no, I've, I think I'll end it off here. I mean, I might as well share a good uh, fail montage here in there for part two. As well as showing off some Coco gameplay. So next time I come back, guys, I shall be starting off the second island. So thank you all very much for watching this part of Let's Play Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy. This has been Kleiner Gamer here. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, please feel free to like if you enjoyed it. Comment down below for your thoughts. And also please feel free to hit that subscribe button for more upcoming Insane Trilogy parts as well. So until then, everybody, this is Kleiner Gamer here signing off. Have a great day wherever you are, and I shall speak to you later. Till then, goodbye.